Hello friends, welcome to our channel Chemistry with SK. In this session, we will see the concept of demineralization process or the ionization process. As we know, boiler gets affected adversely due to impure water or due to hard water. So, it is necessary to soften the water. So, this demineralization process or ionization process is one of the external treatment of water. It means what do you mean by external treatment? The treatment is to be given to water before passing it into boiler. So that is called as external treatment. So the geolite method and demineralization process are the external type of processes or external treatment methods. In previous session we have seen geolite method and now we will see the demineralization or ion exchange. The name itself demineralization, D means loss and mineral. So here we can say there is a loss of all the ions present in the water or we can say ion exchange some ions are exchanged so which ions are exchanged and what is the concept we will see so here all the ions are lost which ions are exchanged only H plus and OH minus ions are exchanged so we will see the principle of this technique is when water is containing some cations and anions or any ionic impurities that are passed through some resins the cation exchanger resin and anion exchanger resin so the cation exchanger resin will capture all the cations and anion exchanger resin will capture all the anions and therefore the water will be free from all the anion all the ions and it will become pure it means in this there are the two type of resins used or there is use of two type of resins in separate vessels one is cation exchanger resin and other is anion exchanger resin what do you mean by cation exchanger resin here this is a polymer group with carboxylated or sulfonated aromatic rings in this case H plus ions are loosely bound to the SO3 minus group or CO minus group it means carboxylated or sulfonated group are there this is carboxylated group and this is sulfonated group and to which the H plus ions are loosely bound. If you see the structure, this may be polymeric chain, this may be polymeric chain, and to the aromatic ring, the SO3H is there, so H is loosely bound. Here it is COH group where H is loosely bound. So, for representation, we are using this short formula as H2R, that is resin containing hydrogen ions or resins which contain loosely bound hydrogen ions so it was about the cation exchanger resin now similarly what are anion exchanger resins these are again the polymeric materials polymeric rings in which there is a presence of quaternary ammonium group what do you mean by quaternary ammonium group as we know valency of nitrogen is 3 and if it is having 4 bonds and it is having a positive charge then we can say there can be the four groups and that's why it is called as quaternary group so here there are three methyl groups one bond is uh, to the benzene ring or this aromatic ring and in this way there are four groups attached so there is a positive charge and to counterbalance this positive charge there is a hydroxide group it means this OH group is loosely bound it means in this case as it is anion exchanger resin, OH minus ions are loosely bound here, and we are using the short form, short formula as R dash OH twice for our uh, reaction representation. We can say. So this is a diagram. This is a chamber. It is another chamber. The first chamber contains cation exchanger resin, and second chamber con consists of anion exchanger bed. It means cation exchanger resins and anion exchanger resins are taken in these compartments and the fittings are there or we can say and the, this type of tubes are there. So first of all when water is added here when impure water or hard water or ionic water is added so what will happen this water will pass through this resin and during passing this as this resin consists of loosely bound H plus ions, so all the cations which are present in this water 
will be entrapped within this zeolite sorry within this cation exchanger bed as in the zeolite method so all the cations will be captured here and h plus ions will come down instead of that cations so water containing h plus ions is being added here so water containing h plus ions and some anions are also getting added here because that anions are coming down then here the all the anions will get captured by the anion exchanger resin with they get entrap here and oh minus ions are coming down so all the anions are captured here and oh minus ions are coming down it means water which is coming down it will contain oh minus and h plus ions it means there is a formation of water it means no other impurities are remaining you can see as all the cations are captured here and all the anions are captured here so only h plus ions are coming here and only oh minus ions are coming here so we can say there is a removal of all the type of impurities then this water can be passed through degasifier for removal of gaseous impurities if any and it becomes pure water but after some time what happens there may be a removal of all the h plus ions and oh minus ions from this cation exchanger and anion exchanger resins or these cation and anion exchanger beds it means all the h plus ions from the cation exchanger and all the anions uh, all the oh minus ions from anion exchanger resin are finished are over that all are coming down in that case no h plus ions are no h minus ions are present here so in this case no further purification or no further softening uh, of water is possible by using these resins you need to regenerate these resins cation exchanger and anion exchanger so as h plus ions were present here so we need to refill it with h plus ions so where we get h plus ions so we are adding some acids so dilute solution of hcl or h2so4 can be added here in the form of washings and then the h plus ions will get added here they will get in uh, again their original positions similarly NaOH is added dilute solution of NaOH is added here so that OH minus ions will get added here it means the cation exchanger and anion exchanger beds will be regenerated by H plus and OH minus ions respectively and this time this wall is to be closed and the washings have to be taken from this side so that the impurities can be taken out from this side we'll see this in terms of reactions let us consider this is H2R that is cation exchanger resin if cations are present whether they may be responsible for hardness or may not be responsible for hardness but these cations will be will be reacting with the cation exchanger resin that is H2R this is very simple reaction just this cation will come here this cation will come here it means Na and R will form Na2R that is we have to balance the reaction so there will be Na2R formation and H plus ions are released in this case so what does it mean the cation exchanger resin which was containing H plus ions now it is capturing Na plus ions and there is formation of Na2R and H plus ions are released in water while if cation exchanger resin is capturing calcium ions or calcium like ions then there is a reaction with calcium and R that is calcium resin it means resins are capturing the calcium ions heavy metal ions and H plus ions are released so these are the reactions which are taking place in cation exchanger resin while in anion exchanger resin suppose it is R dash OH twice that is anion exchanger resin the symbolic formula we can say short formula we can say if anions are present in water that will react here now what to write or how to write the reaction we can say these hydroxides or the negative charge particles are coming here these negative particles here it means we have to exchange the negative ions here in the reaction so what will happen R dash and the Cl will form R dash Cl2 and OH minus ions are released while here ROH2 and CO3 minus suppose carbonate are there then this carbonate and hydroxides are exchanged and there is reaction as R dash and CO3 to form R dash CO3 and hydroxide ions are released here 
so in this way two OH minus ions are formed here also two OH minus ions are formed so here in cation exchanger resin H plus ions are released in water while in anion exchanger resin OH minus ions are released in water and which reactions will take place during regeneration so these are the reactions we need to add HCl or H2SO4 solutions dilute solutions for regeneration of cation exchanger resin so this is the cation exchanger resin in which sodium ions are captured or calcium ions are captured as seen in the previous reactions and if HCl is used during washing then there will be a reaction simple reaction cation is to be exchanged or anion is to be exchanged you can say so sodium will come here hydrogen will come here so it will become hydrogen will come here so it will be formation of H2R as H2R is formed it means cation exchanger resin is regenerated and what is remaining this sodium and this chlorine there is formation of NaCl so here it is only shown in the form of Na plus if you are showing ionic reactions we can show Na plus or if you are showing NCl then you can show NaCl so we should write here NaCl then calcium R resin that is resin is calcium is attached to resins and HCl is reacting so again H coming here calcium is here so HR that is H2R and calcium and chlorine calcium chloride formation as here NaCl formation here calcium chloride formation similarly the anion exchanger resins are regenerated by using NaOH solution dilute NaOH solution that is R dash Cl2 it means this is anion exchanger resin it was anion exchanger resin so this anion exchanger resin was capturing cal uh, anions like chlorine sulfate etc so how the reaction will take place NaOH the OH minus will come here, chlorine will come here. It means OH minus if coming here, formation of R dash OH twice. Here also, R dash SO4 and NaOH. So OH minus come here, so sulfate will come here. So R dash OH twice will be formed. And remaining will be this chlorine and sodium will form NaCl. And this sodium and sulfate will, full, will form sulfate, sodium sulfate. So you need to just balance the reactions, simple reactions. So this is the basic concept behind these reactions. And in this way, the reactions are taking place or you can say the processes are taking place and the regeneration reactions have to be carried out. During regeneration, there is a refilling of H plus and OH minus ions in the cation and anion exchanger resin and that are again ready for further purification or further softening of water. We'll see the advantages of these methods. This method gives water of almost zero hardness and no ionic impurities are remaining because all ionic impurities will be removed. Here, if we are using degasifier and if water is being passed through degasifier, then all the gaseous impurities can also be removed. It may be CO2 or O2 or some other gases that will be expelled out and we can get water of distilled quality standard. Process is easy to operate with negligible running cost, but it has certain limitations that initial investment for this instrument a setup is higher and process can be operated only for small scale purification of water because if you are using it for large scale purification then the regeneration may be frequently required then regeneration may be frequently required. So that's it. In this way, it was all about the ion exchange method where there is an exchange of cations and anions by H plus and OH minus ions respectively. This method is also called as deionization or demineralization method because there is a loss of ions or there is a removal of all ionic impurities. So we'll meet in next videos on our syllabus topics of engineering chemistry so if you are not subscribed yet subscribe it immediately and wait for next video thank you